One day, Lord Chaitanya's personal servant, Govinda, came to Siddhabakula, Haridas Thakur's kutir. And he found Haridas was laying down on his back, chanting the holy names, Hare Krishna. And Govinda said, please get up, Haridas. Is there something wrong? I have brought on the instruction of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Lord Jagannath Mahaprasad, please get up and eat prasad. And Haridas said, I cannot. I have not finished my vow of chanting 300,000 names today. So how can I eat prasad? But at the same time, Mahaprasad is Krishna himself. How can I not honor the prasad? So this was his dilemma. He didn't want to eat it, but he couldn't not eat it. Haridas Thakur showed his example. He offered his sincere, heartfelt obeisances to the prasad. He offered prayers of love, respect, and worship to the prasad. And then he took a tiny little poor particle of it and ate it. That's how he honored the prasad. The next day, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came. He had heard the report from Govinda. And he said, Haridas, tell me, are you well? And Haridas said, my body is quite well, but my, my mind is not. Lord Chaitanya said, well, what is the problem? He said, I am not able to finish my regulation of chanting the holy names of the Lord. Therefore, I am in a diseased condition. Herein, Srila Prabhupada writes in purport that we all have a regulation for chanting the holy names. Srila Prabhupada prescribed 16 rounds for those who were very serious, minimum. If we do not complete our chanting according to this regulation, we should understand that spiritually we are in a diseased condition. But Prabhupada said not only just chanting, but chanting in such a way that we actually can hear it and focus our mind on it. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to Haridas Thakur, he said, you are so old now. It's not possible for you to finish chanting three lakhs every day. Reduce the number of rounds that you're chanting. You have incarnated in this world for the purpose of spreading the glories of the Harinam Sankirtan movement and you have fulfilled the purpose of your incarnation. You have done it. You have shown the highest example. But now you're old. There's no need. Please, reduce the number of rounds. Haridas Thakur replied, My dear Lord, kindly hear my plea. I was born in an inferior family. My body is abominable. My acts are very low. Therefore, I am the lowest and most condemned of all men. I am unseeable. I am untouchable. Yet you have accepted me as your servant. And in doing so, you have elevated me to the platform of Vaikuntha. My dear Lord, you are the supreme independent personality of Godhead. By your will, you can make the entire universe dance as you like it to dance. And even me, you have made me dance according to your wishes. An example. In the house of Adwaitacharya, you awarded me the highest, most prestigious position of giving the first remnants of his shraddha, even though I was born in a family of malechas, and I am a malecha. My Lord, for a very long time, I have had a desire. Please fulfill my desire. I know that you are independent, and you are supreme, and if you like, you can try to fulfill my desire. It is the one desire I have been longing for for a long time. I feel that very soon you will perform the final chapter of your pastime within this material world. I do not want to see this closing chapter of your material world pastimes. Haridas Thakur is telling, I will not be able to bear seeing you leave this world. And I feel that it's coming very soon. Therefore, before that pastime is performed, I beg of you, my Lord, allow my body to fall down at your lotus feet. Allow me to clasp those lotus feet and press them firmly on my heart. Allow my eyes to see your beautiful lotus-like face. And with my tongue chanting your holy names, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Let my body fall down before you. He's praying to die. Lord Chaitanya heard this and became very emotional. 
He said, Haridas, certainly, because you're such a great devotee, whatever you wish, Krishna must fulfill. But why are you asking for this? What about me? All of my pleasure in this world is coming due to your association. Why do you want to leave me behind? Haridas replied, My Lord, why are you creating this illusion? What is my value? He said, there are so many important and good devotees. You have millions of devotees who are so far superior to me that they are fit to sit on top of my head. They are actually very important. They are doing significant things for your movement. I'm doing nothing. If an insect dies, what is the loss? If an insignificant ant passes away, What is the loss to this material world? My Lord, I am insignificant. Begging you, please fulfill this one desire. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became very grave and he left. The next day, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu brought his most intimate devotees with him to the Bhajan Kutir of Srila Haridas Thakur. There was Ramananda Rai, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, Swarup Damodar Goswami, Vakreshwar Pandit, Jagadananda Pandit, Shankar Pandit, Kashishwar Pandit. These are the devotees that are named. So many great souls. When they came in, Haridas Thakur offered his obeisances, dandavats, to every single devotee. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu looked at him and said, Haridas, what is the news? And Haridas's reply, Whatever mercy you bestow upon me. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu knew his heart. He told Swarup Damodar Goswami to begin kirtan. All around Haridas Thakur, the devotees were very loudly chanting the holy name. Then Sri Gauranga began to extol the glories of Thakur Haridas as if he had five mouths deriving great happiness, bliss, describing the glories of his devotee. How beautiful. Machchita madgata prana bodhiyanta parasparam katiyanthascha ma nityam tushyanti charamanticha. Bhagavad Gita tells how my devotees love to gather together and they derive the greatest happiness discussing my glories. Harikata, discussing the glories of the Lord is the greatest happiness for the devotees. Speaking the glories, hearing the glories, chanting the glories. But that person who gives us the highest bliss by chanting his glories, or Sri Radharani, her glories, Mahaprabhu Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha Krishna Nahi Anya. Radha and Krishna is there as Mahaprabhu. What gives him the greatest pleasure? Chanting the glories of his devotees. Haridas Thakur surrendered his life at all risk to chant the glories of the Lord 24 hours a day. And what was the reciprocation that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu found the greatest happiness chanting the glories of Haridas Thakur? And all the devotees were struck with wonder to hear Lord Chaitanya so blissfully describing Haridas Thakur. Then Srila Haridas Thakur took the dust of the feet of every single devotee there and applied that dust to his head, not as a ritual. When you take the dust of the feet of a devotee on your head, Krishna sees your intent. If you're doing it as a ritual, you get a little purification. But the real spirit is the highest part of my body, my head. I'm putting it under the dust of the lowest part of your body, your feet. That means you are great. I am insignificant. I am your servant. From the heart of heart, I want to serve you because you are Prabhu, you are master. And I am das, 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 anu, 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 das, insignificant servant. And that was the mood of Srila Haridas Thakur when he was putting the dust of the devotee's feet on his head. That was his heart. That is what the Lord is seeing and feeling. For a Vaishnav, the dust of the feet of, a, of another Vaishnav is the most sacred, treasured, invaluable attainment in this entire creation of Lord Brahma. Pure gold necklaces, pure gold ornaments, beautiful marble palaces, Rolls Royce, Mercedes Benz, owning 10,000 acres of land in South Bombay. What's it worth? You can't take any of it with you after you die. It cannot awaken the treasure of love of God in your heart. What really is its value? 
spiritually, it has no value. Unless it's used in Krishna's service, then it has value. But the dust of the feet of a devotee could liberate you from all suffering forever. The dust of a feet of a devotee can awaken prema bhakti, ecstatic love can give us entrance into the leela of Sri Vrindavan Dham. What a treasure! How much do we appreciate it? How much do we long for it? And you see, when you take the dust of the feet of a devotee on your head, you'll get benefit. But according to how much you value it, appreciate it, and recognize its value, you're going to get that much more benefit. So Haridas Thakur took the dust of every devotee, put it on his head, in such a spirit of servitude. Then he pressed Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's beautiful golden lotus feet upon his heart. And all the devotees, including Lord Chaitanya, chanted Harinam Sankirtan. As this chanting filled the entire atmosphere, Thakur Haridas looked up at Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's beautiful moon-like face. His eyes were like two bumblebees gazing upon it. Tears were flowing from his eyes incessantly as Haridas repeatedly chanted, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Sri is Radharani, Krishna is Shamsundar, Chaitanya. Who is Lord Chaitanya, Radha and Krishna? This was the name he was chanting again and again and again as all the other devotees were loudly chanting Harinam. And in that state, Haridas Thakur gave up his life. The devotees were astonished. Immediately they all remembered the passing of Bhishma. On the battlefield of Kurukshetra, Bhishma simply waited in a bed of arrows for many weeks in the cold of winter for Krishna to return. He knew that Krishna would return because Krishna always satisfies the innermost desires of his devotees. And in the presence of Lord Krishna, Bhishma gave up his life. When Haridas Thakur gave up his life, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was so inundated with feelings of ecstatic jubilation and separation. He lifted Haridas Thakur's body up and put it on his lap, then began to dance. Vakreshwar Pandit was dancing, Swarup Damodar Goswami and all the others were chanting, Ramananda Rai, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. They were all dancing and chanting, dancing and chanting, as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was dancing throughout the entire courtyard, holding the body of Srila Haridas Thakur. Mahaprabhu's eyes flooding with tears of love for his devotees as everyone was loudly celebrating the passing of Haridas by the chanting of the holy name. Mahaprabhu couldn't give up this body, the same body that was condemned by most of the Hindu society. The supreme absolute truth, the Lord of all lords, the ultimate goal of all religions, couldn't give up holding the dead corpse of that person. Isn't that amazing? Because corpses are considered contaminated, yes? But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu couldn't give up the corpse. He was so attached to Haridas Thakur. Now, sannyasis are not supposed to be attached. And he's the crest jewel of all sannyasis. But the ultimate detachment is to be completely attached to Krishna, to Krishna's devotees, to Krishna Kata, to Krishna Nam, to Krishna Seva. That is detachment of its highest sense. Swarup Damodar Goswami somehow or other stopped the kirtan and said, we have to perform the last rites. So they, they quickly made a, a carrier for Haridas that looked like a spaceship, according to Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. They were carrying him through the lanes of Puri. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself was leading the Nagar Sankirtan procession, dancing in ecstasy. They came to the sea. They bathed the body of Haridas Thakur with the seawater. And as they were bathing it, Lord Chaitanya proclaimed for all time to come that because Haridas Thakur's body is today being bathed in the sea, This sea is now so pure, it will forever be a place of holy pilgrimage. And as they were pouring water over the feet of Haridas, every one of the devotees was catching the water and drinking it for their purification. 
and they were in ecstasy. This is very, very amazing. These are sannyasis. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya is very, very highly placed Brahmin, practically the guru of the king. All these devotees, corpse is supposed to be contaminated, and salt water doesn't taste very good. But they're drinking the salt water that's washing the feet of a corpse, drinking it, sprinkling it on their head, considering this the great treasure to get purified, to honor and worship this devotee. Love is beyond ritualistic regulations, and the body of a pure devotee is absolutely pure. After bathing his body, they had dug a hole in the sand, they placed the body in it, and then they began to offer all sorts of mahaprasad of Jagannath, sandalwood and different types of clothes and food and everything, garlands, flowers. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, with great feeling, deep feeling, he started the process with his own loving hands of covering the body of Haridas Thakur with sand. Such an offering of love. Then all the devotees went around that pit and began to offer sand. In bhakti, it's beyond material consideration. It's the intent. But Lord Chaitanya is offering the sand with love and devotion. And all the devotees are offering sand with love and devotion. They're offering it as an expression of their deepest, most profound love, gratitude to Haridas Thakur. Sand. And in this way, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu buried the body. They fenced it off so that other people would not step over it. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his devotees, they circumambulated it several times while they danced and chanted in ecstasy. Then they went into the ocean to bathe and they were splashing each other. And according to Kaviraj Goswami, in jubilation. You were listening to Radhanath Swami on devotionalnectar.com.